What's going on, everyone? It's Thursday, November 13th, 2014. Welcome to the 404 Show. My name is Jeff Bacalar. I'm joined by Ayaz Akhtar, Esquire, and then Ariel Nunez, our Esquire, good buddy Ariel, the over third. there on the board. Howdy. Looking stylish. Oh, I like Did you get your uh, eyes fixed? Um, I'm getting new contact lenses soon. You change your, your prescription? No, it's the same, but it was, you know, every year you got to get a new one. I hate it. Yeah? I wish they could just give me new contacts, but... What about... Why don't you use the permanent ones? Um, I'm, I get really lazy with, like, taking them off, and then I end up sleeping with them. Ooh. And since I only have one eye, that's, like, really bad. Right. So I'm just, like, give me the disposable ones so I can just toss them out. You got you to gotta hold on to that good eye. Exactly. He needs to, he needs to laser the other one just to get it done. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't bother with this nonsense. What, laser the good one or the bad one? <laughs> the good one. <laughs> well, make the, the, I would think you laser the bad one. Yeah, oh, just like it won't I'm, work, though. I'm playing it, with house money. Yeah. It's uncorrectable. Oh my impossible God. to fix what? this eye right here. In this day and age? Yeah, even, even with LASIK. Really? Yes. With modern bionic technology. Yep. Well, thanks a lot, Captain Depressing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nothing can be done for you. They said only if someone donates an eye, so if you guys want to volunteer. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Well, that's... That changes everything. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's what do you mean? Impossible. That's yeah. totally possible. It's yeah. unlikely, but very possible. Yeah, exactly. Wow. I don't think I want someone else's eye though. Why what? Not? See, yeah, I'm with you, man. Because yeah. I would think if I have like someone else's liver, mm-hmm. I would somehow consume a piece of their soul. Yeah. And then be possessed by them. Right, yeah. Exactly. For yeah. the rest of my days. Yeah. You think it'd be like a total possession? Do you think it'd be like a partial possession? I would think it'd be. I think a partial. Yeah. I think partially. like. Mostly involuntary movements, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, I think that'd be fine. That's what I worry about. That's like the real things I worry yeah, about. Yeah, well, I mean, that seems like a completely fun part of the day. <laughs> like, why'd you do that? Oh, it's my liver yeah. or my new eye. Yeah. Oh, you could just blame everything you do yeah. on that, too. You're like, oh, that's my demon liver. Yeah. My bad. It's, like I it's got it. a mind of its own. <laughs> Uh yeah, I, it's amazing. Like eye stuff is amazing. I I yeah. have astigmatism. I don't know if mm-hmm. you can correct that with laser. Can you? I uh, don't know. I have a two in my left eye. It sucks, um, but it's not the worst thing. I I have mm-hmm. glasses and whatnot, but I'm always I always wonder like what must have happened before eyeglasses. Like imagine three hundred years. When were eyeglasses invented? I don't know. I have no freaking idea. But, okay, fine. Of like, all the things, I, I know I'm wearing them. I didn't research them. But, I also don't know when belts were invented. I'm wearing a belt. No. Oh, my <laughs> God. People's pants falling down is nowhere near as important as seeing clearly. Oh, okay. Go okay? Ahead. So imagine you're like a caveman or something, right? Done. You're done. There's, you, you have no chance whatsoever. Like, think about the blindest person you know. Think okay. about like Steve Guttenberg. Right. He's got the really mm-hmm. thick glasses. Right? How screwed. Yeah. Wouldn't he just... Right? Like, you go, you, <laughs> yeah. you're just like doing that Frankensteinian sort of like feely touchy thing to see where you're at. I just think it'd be hyper jumpy, just, man. You just do that to like a tiger's face and you're done. <laughs> I just think if we saw any blob, whatever it may be, if it's moving, he's just jumpy. And it's not until the other caveman's like, Steve, it's me, Steve. It's me. And then he's okay. Right. I think that's how the blind would survive. I don't know. The first guy who tried the tiger petting probably was killed. It's amazing to me that like shitty vision hasn't evolved out of us. Because it's not, I guess it's just not a hereditary thing. It's not passed down through DNA, I guess. It is. Well, then what the hell? Well, that means these people survived. Oh, we, <laughs> we got to stop. We got to start killing off the people. Exactly. Yeah. People yeah. who have a problem with their eyes should not have children. It's, it's just, I mean, it's super fixable. So in the modern age, it's not a problem. But think about it, man. You had no. If you made it to twelve, you were defying the odds. Well, yeah, that was that, that too. Or you just accepted the world, and you're like, ah, I guess the world's blurry. Here you go. Eyeglasses were invented between twelve sixty eight and twelve eighty nine in Italy. Okay, so we're talking like eight hundred years. That's a long freaking time. That's a long time, man. All right. Interesting. Little uh, fun fact. Little mm-hmm. TIL today. We got some trivia today. Um, this is. Funny story uh, from Ars Technica. One of the FBI's most wanted cyber criminal is a bad dude, okay? Super bad guy. Turns out uh, one of the passwords that that this criminal cyber mastermind was using was the name of his cat. 
was his cat like named like something with awesome characters, 28 characters, like Mr. Mixel Pussick nope. with like asterisks and like parentheses? Nope. It was Chewy. <laughs> Chewy one, two, three. Reminds me of that scene in Spaceballs. One, two, three, four, five. Really? <laughs> Sounds like you, a- the, mo- the most sought after cyber criminal. Your password is Chewy123? That, that's no example to set for the other cyber criminals of the world. Is this guy super confident, you think? He was like, nobody will ever catch me, so it doesn't matter what my password is? Or is this, this guy's just an idiot of a different kind of style? I don't know, man. It's, I think it's like the Superman thing. We're like that dude, like, like uh, Alan Cummings' character in GoldenEye. I'm invincible. It's right. like you just have this complete misconception. Or like the Riddler. It's like, you'll never figure this out, Batman. It's like, right. Batman always figures you out, man. Always. Every freaking time. You have yet to be successful, and yeah. you still try this. Yeah. But Chewy123. There's never been a riddle where he's like still noodling it. <laughs> he's like, like, Batman's just, been busy for three weeks. What's yeah. he been doing? Oh, the Riddler hmm. actually got him this time. Hmm. See, just I thought it was this. Just couldn't quite, <laughs> couldn't quite wrap, his, <laughs> wrap his bat wings around Instead it. of like trying to you know, seek the Riddler down, he just sat and thought about it. Like, yeah. Hmm. In that like Atlas pose, right? Of course. Yeah. yeah. Thinking man. Thinking, thinking man. Sorry, yeah, thinking man. The Atlas is the globe. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> the Batman, wrong statue. He's holding the riddle <laughs> like this. He's like, oh, the riddle's heavy. <laughs> it's weighing it's, on it's, me. <laughs> okay, that was puntacular. So, yeah, cyber criminals. I mean, come on. Have the decency to change your password to something alphanumeric that's like not a word, not your cat, not your direct. Of course, it's his cat. This guy didn't have a dog. I had a cat. You think that cat people are inherently evil? I don't think there's one hacker that's got a dog. Well, they're busy. They're too busy. That's probably what it is because you're worrying their, about yeah. hacking. You're like, Always be suspicious of cat owners because they have a cat because cats are low maintenance. They're up to something else. This is your, so if people have goldfish, just like look the hell out. Yeah. You know, you know they're oh. su- super low maintenance pets. Those people are selfish. Good to know. So people have horses, trustworthy. Oh my God. They have to be. Are you kidding? Cost totally. like thousands of dollars to totally. have a pony. Absolutely, I know I'm right. <laughs> we proved it. I think. I think. Yeah. This is. This is. This is now true forever. This must be done. Uh, if you have a horse, trustworthy. If you have a cat, you're up to something. Mm-hmm. Suspicious as hell. If you got a calico, forget it. <laughs> um, all right. What's next? My computer froze. Uh, we got your online stores are changing pricing depending on how you shop. I don't know anything about this. What's going on? Yeah, so this was a story that kind of came out a while ago. Remember when um, there was was a little bit of evidence that I think it was Orbitz or one of those travel sites was changing the price of a a flight Mm -hmm. uh, by sniffing out what you were using to browse the site. So if you had a Mac, odds are you might be a little more well off. So they would bump up the price a little bit for you because you were browsing on a Mac. But for the guy with the PC, oh, he's the common man. He's a groundling. Let's, let's make it more affordable for this guy. And uh, this story here in Wired that came out uh, this morning is all about online stores changing their prices depending on how you shop, not necessarily how you, uh, how you appear, like what your identity looks like to the website, but more so... Um, your habits and a lot of it is using cookies and demographics like your zip code and stuff like that all sort of playing along into this confusing algorithm of price fluctuation where these prices are personalized to a particular shopper and the article goes into all the research that's been done and uh, people who tend to to uh, view stores through a mobile device, have a, have a different experience than someone who's on a desktop device. They're bringing in the psychology of it all and having that uh, impact the final price that you're offered. This is really depressing and irritating. It's the way it is, man. Well, it's a brave new world out there. It, it clearly is an evolution of, of online shopping. I mean, you can't get mad at it because it must work. Oh, no, I think I can you get, can mad, get mad, at mad at it. I'm going to get mad at this. Anything. I cannot stand booking flights. I can't stand getting hotels because the search you run like on you know Monday at 8, it's not the same at Monday at 10. So everything shifts. It's the same same freaking search terms. Everything changes. Prices go through the roof. And then there was I was looking at, at the article, though. It says there's no one-size-fits-all solution. So you're basically screwed no matter what you do because all the services are different. Yeah. So... 
what this is is some fun doom and gloom for Thursday. It's I mean, there's no other way to spin it, brother. This is how it is. So basically, buy some cheap stuff. I mean, look, and you, then, you ever add something to your Amazon cart and then you go back a day later and it's like, this has decreased in price by a dollar. Well, at least they tell you that. Right. It's, it's strange. You don't know what forces are at work that changed it. It just happened. Or maybe it's like this free market thing where like the price, you know, like a stock market where like the price is fluctuating. You're like, oh, well, milk is seven cents cheaper than it was yesterday. Do you want an, like an explanation on it? Amazon's like, do you want to know why? I would like some backstory. That'd be how, interesting. I'd like that little link know? that says, okay, the reason why milk we had a good has month. gone down. Yeah. Passing the savings along to the consumer. Like Bessie had a good quarter. The guys who did all this research uh, go into more detail. And here's some, one that kind of stood out to me is like more, you know, mystery sort of strange things happening. So there were times when the people doing this were able to see other forms of price discrimination on some websites, but were unable to get the, to the root cause of that price variation. Okay. So like, for example, on Sears and when they would do like rental car websites, they would try out different browsers and different pro platforms. They would log in, log out, and they couldn't tell why the price was changing. It just was. They couldn't discern a pattern. Which is weird because that really leads annoying. any educated person to guess, well, maybe they're just like randomly spitting out prices. So this is like that PT game, like how to, yeah. how to figure how out. How do you like, figure it out? How does this work? It's like, ah, there's no, nothing special, so we'll screw you either way. They speculate a little bit, but I think some of it too is like, hey, you know, and they go into it uh, with the talk of cookies. Mm -hmm. They say that cookies aren't necessarily a bad thing because if you, <coughs> um, you know, if you go to a site like Cheap Tickets or Orbitz, Users who are logged in will awful, often see a members only price that would on average save them around $12 on something like a hotel. But if you clear your cookies and then you search, you wouldn't be logged in necessarily mm -hmm. and you would miss out on that discount. There's other things too, like cookies can kind of tell you like this guy's on Twitter all the time or this guy's whatever. And that might be uh, a, a deciding factor as to how the algorithm treats your IP and says, all right, well, I as won't shut up on Google Plus about his deals that he gets. Yeah, that's let's, me. <laughs> let's save him a couple bucks and maybe he'll he'll he'll, you know, shout us out. That'll definitely happen on Google Plus, my Google yeah. Plus accounts. Yeah, because that's where all the social kids are at now. <laughs> Everyone's rocking Google Plus. Ariel, do you feel screwed by this? Yes. It's just not fair. <laughs> it's just not fair. I don't know what else. This just saying. seems depressing, man. It's like there's nothing we could do about it other than like buy some cheap computers and, and really crappy phones to book our stuff on and hope that they they'll take pity gonna, on us. You're gonna like fake pour it. You're just gonna be like Let's go get like a an LG something or other. Not a G three, but like, you know, like an old G two. An right? old G. <laughs> <laughs> if you're an old G, you're gonna get the good prices, obviously. Yeah. That's the I way. Don't know. I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna I'm gonna set my browser using a user agent spoofer and be like, okay, it's IE5. Hmm. I'm obviously clueless if yeah. I'm running IE5. So either they, do you think they're gonna charge me more or less? If no, I buy more because you're so clueless that you wouldn't know if you're getting. A good that means deal my PC is really old. It might be I might be old enough that I've saved money. I guess. No, because then I, if, if I see that, I'm like, huh, this guy, <laughs> I can do anything. <laughs> charge him anything. It's like I'm gonna make sure that I infect your computer. Um. Our buddies at Geek.com put up a story about a, an absolutely ridiculous PlayStation TV peripheral. What the hell is this thing? All right. So from the picture, you can see that it looks like a PlayStation portable. And there's a big screen. Looks what, like a Vita is what it looks well, like. Well, there's actually a PlayStation TV locked in the back. So it makes the PSP, sorry, the PS TV. That's what you're talking about, the TV. It makes the TV portable into basically a giant version of the Vita. Right. Because the TV version is the home version of the portable Vita. It's like reverse engineering Yeah. what essentially the PlayStation TV was meant for. It's this little box. It's like a Roku. It plugs into your TV, and it acts like it's a Vita. So you can do Vita stuff on your big screen TV at home. But what this does is take that thing mm -hmm. and turns it right back into a Vita, it which is clearly... The dumbest thing you could possibly do. Seven, well, it's got a larger screen than the Vita, right? This has got a 1024 by 600. So you Don't got, care. You get seven inches of screen. Great. You get five inches on the uh, Vita itself. Yeah. You get... But um, get to the price. It's 200 bucks. It's $200. Without the PlayStation TV. So right. it costs the same as the Vita off the bat. Get a slightly Vita's larger. cheaper than that, dude. Is it? Yeah, Vita's probably like 150 now. Well, if it's that cheap, then it just really makes no sense. It's just... It's turning a non-portable system into a portable system. 
Where does this come from? I kind of like this. No, stop. This is so stupid. I like it. It's, but I mean, the thing is, I think I like the idea of a console becoming portable. But this is a portable that became a console that became portable. That's the where it gets stupid. I have a weird sort of fascination when they do when they turn like a PS4 into a laptop, mm -hmm. like you've seen, or the Xbox One. But this is this is just like I, it doesn't make sense why it would happen like this. Uh, I was wrong about the price of the Vita, though. Man, on Amazon, it looks like it's still two fifty. Two fifty. This thing two fifty still. Well, maybe that's a special kind of Vita. I don't know. Maybe I'm just. Or they just the they just know you're into games, so they they, <laughs> you're right. they do boost up the price. If I search it, it'll be like fifty bucks. It'll be free. <laughs> you're right. It's an add-on item for you. This is really terrifying. Yeah, I don't get it, but um, it's a thing. It's called Deca Vita Seven, by the way. If you want to buy one of these, it's called Deca Vita Seven. Cool. You can get yourself a portable version of a non-portable thing. All right, wait, no, I found a different one. Oh, I'm sorry. So you can get a refurbished Vita for 170. That's that's not great. Or you could get the limited edition Borderlands 2 version for 200. That's that's yeah. There you go. That's cheaper. All right. Finally, what do we got, Wolfman? Wolfman. We got Wolfman coming. Apparently, uh, according to I think it was Deadline, Digital Trends has a report about this. Uh, Universal Studios plotting their next move. You know, Universal Studios has the, a lot of monsters. Frankenstein, they got Dracula and Wolfman. It looks like 2017. This is the time. We're going to get a new Wolfman movie. So, okay, I never saw... I don't, I'm not familiar with Wolfman. It's like an old school horror classic, right? You've never seen Wolfman or like any of like the billions I've of Wolfman like movies? I've seen like Nosferatu. That's like a bat. Vampire, this bat vampire guy. That's in the yeah. same vein as like the campy, yeah, black and white thing. How do you okay, stop it? Don't watch, start because you're so much more uncultured than I am. I, I understand that. The, the things, that, <laughs> he's like, the, right. the, the he's like, as long as we got that. The out weird of the thing way. is like that the holes you have in your head when no, it comes to no. certain things oh are just God. so gaping. No, how do you nuts. not know the Universal monsters? I do. <laughs> I know them. Well, Dracula's not Nosferatu, first of all. Yeah, you know but it's that. the same sort of thing. It's not the same thing. So you got Wolfman, who's never had a cool movie. Well, that's the thing. So you don't even know that Wolfman hasn't had a cool movie. Or they try to reboot it with, I think Look was, at this guy. There's nothing cool about him. He looks like, a, <laughs> he looks like Will Ferrell. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that being said, obviously... He looks like a startled Will Ferrell. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably not the look you're going to see. They rebooted this in 2010 with Benicio del Toro. It totally tanked. Did they really? I kid you not, man. They wow. actually bothered to try this because Universal every couple of years tries. These are not good brands. Dracula? Dracula, fine. It's like a timeless sort of thing. But Frankenstein. No one, yeah, the, you think Frankenstein's all of a sudden gonna have a new one that's like amazing and the people last are gonna new one flock was, to the theater? Was De Niro's version, right? The Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. So they they keep. Trying over and over again. Okay, these things. it's not working. Well, no, a, a thirteen-year-old doesn't give a shit about Wolfman. If I ask a thirteen-year-old, he'll tell me to go f myself. Wolfman, really? I'm seeing Avengers, MRFer. So What's you, up, Thor, and all that? Is it just is it just the look of the Wolfman that's driving you nuts? No, I actually think there's something charming about this guy. <laughs> He's he like goes from nice being guy. Will right? He seems like a nice yeah. dude. He's, He's just like, like, huh, what? I didn't know you, you were here. You yeah. just want to buy him a drink. Yeah, I'd hang out thing. with Wolfman. Listen up, Wolfman. I have a friend whose last name is Wolf. I just call him Wolfman. But it has nothing to do Does with Does he deserve kid. a movie? That's my question. 2017. More than that guy. Should the Wolfman. Okay, it's the basic monster movie. Guy turns into a werewolf with this moon. We're, we're beyond basic. Like, Look, man, I'm not even. I'm not even. I'm not even picking sides. Here. You know, we had Godzilla just happened like this That's, year, right? Okay, like Godzilla's Godzilla brand is so much more relevant. How is it? How is a giant freaking monster relevant compared to a wolf? I need you to know this. Everyone listening to this right now, yeah, go for it. Must agree with me. There's no way people are like, well, I just has a point. Wolfman no, does have no, more no. Wait, hang on. A than I never said Wolfman is any good because I no, tried to get into Wolfman. But Godzilla but is this thing that never went away. It always was relevant. You can't just resurrect Wolfman and be like, ah, oh, it might work again. It didn't four years ago. And Godzilla, most people didn't really like this Godzilla. They he hated wasn't the it. Broderick one. That one was hilarious. And this one, people are like kind of on the fence about it. People did but not. It, but there'll be another one in 2020. They did not I'll have a that. violent reaction to it. This is just like ripping branding and hoping it works. But Wolfman, it's no I've branding. tried, man. I have tried to watch Wolfman. They're and better, they're better the off making Wolfman like movies. a Betty Boop movie, which they are doing. 
Is that universal? Yeah, that is universal. It's better, they're better off doing that. You think no Betty Boop will do better than a Wolfman movie? I will bet you real American money. One dollar American. No, we're not doing. We're doing like a hundred dollars. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Come on, lawyer, lawyer up. Well, then I is wouldn't that, do anything. Would I sh- right <laughs> wouldn't I shut up then? If I'm going to lawyer up, I'm going to shut up. It doesn't I'm have anything to do. Hire one. Right. Be quiet. All I'm saying. Let's sign the contract. Write it up. Hundred dollars. I don't know if that's legal in this state, pal. Don't matter. That's well. I don't I, care about the law. You can't have a contract that's only legal uh, subjects. You know that, right? That's like saying, "Hey, can you kill this guy?" And you're like, "Yeah, let's sign a deal for this." And then you don't do it. Do you think I can sue you, Ariel? You know what he's doing right now? He's acting like a lawyer now. He's that's acting he's like doing. a goddamn lawyer. <laughs> hey. And you're and you're getting you're dis- you're trying to distract. You're trying to take us away from the point at hand. That Wolfman will do better than Betty Boop. No, it won't. It's, it's gonna won't. happen. Betty- this is assuming this even happens. Okay, in 2017. how about this? You, I bet you ask a hundred people outside. Which have you heard of, Wolfman or Betty Boop? Betty Boop will slaughter Wolfman. Okay, I'm going to get so many confused people because they're going to be like a good number of people who have no idea what I'm talking about with either one. Right, but mo- but the people that do know, they will know Betty Boop more often than they know than Wolfman. the Wolfman. Yeah, the Wolfman. The Wolfman. Like I barely know what that is. Barely. How is that possible? I know what it is because you see like archive footage. What about Teen Wolf? You ever watch Teen Wolf? Yeah, but that's not Wolfman. That's a Wolfman. No, but uh, it's a version, out. right? That is that. That's not in the canon no. of Wolfman. Of course no, not. Man. Of course, yeah. We we know Wolf. Uh, Teen Wolf. Yeah. That's okay with you, Michael guys. J. Fox. So is that all it takes for this to be okay? Do a Teen Wolf man. <laughs> <No>. We're <kidding laughs> Wolf boy. <laughs> a Teen Wolf is fine. Yeah. A Wolf man is dumb. So as long as this person's in his adolescence, you're happy with well, it. Wait, what, what was what was American Werewolf in Paris? Does that fall into this? I don't know. I don't think it does. I think we're just talking about Wolfman. Yeah, it's trying. Like, I mean, he's a werewolf, right? Yeah, he's a werewolf. I feel like werewolves had their little run. All right, like, well, that's cool different because then that's like, you know, no, Twilight. It's then it's like Twilight and stuff. It's just called the Wolfman. So like, it's he's a werewolf. This is throwing you uh, off. I in think which you're. Way? I think you're trying to change. I think you're trying to change the rules of our little. We don't even bet. have an arrangement oh, yet. Yes, we do. Ariel is my witness. <laughs> As Ariel and the recording and the wave files will show you. Yeah, everyone <laughs> listening to this show is like they're doing their own bets based on our bet. That's right. We're gonna have Vegas has some action on. I it. can't wait to see the Vegas odds of Wolfman first getting a movie greenlit. Don't forget now. So I, it's not we, even definitive. This is it could be right because Universal's got a movie coming and it's probably the Wolfman. I think we were talking about the the, the uh, brainstorming sessions for Eaten Alive yesterday. I think it's the same kind of stupidity when it comes to making a Wolfman movie. It's like, uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's sure. do that again. Sure. Okay. So, so no. then we're on the same page as that. Oh, no. I really think it's going to not do very well. But Betty yeah. Boop, I think, is going to be worse. I think Betty Boop is going to do okay. Depends People, on who they get to play her. Right. If it's like Skojo, it's over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> over. Okay, true. That's over. all about the casting. Yeah. Over. That's true. I thought that Benicio del Toro could have worked with the Wolfman, and it didn't work. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going out on a limb here. I'm. I think I'm being pretty conservative. I'm pretty sure Betty Boop's gonna be like a CG character. Like Don't matter. Freakish. As long as Skojo's coming out of her mouth like that voice, <laughs> it's gonna be fine. Okay. So if Skojo's like the Wolf Woman. <laughs> Then it's got then a chance. Do, okay, there, there we go. That's, that's all it took. Right. As long as it's Scarlett Johansson playing the wolf man or wolf person. Yeah. I that think, would probably save the damn franchise. I, I, think, I think it would resurrect it. There you go. Now you got an answer. We all don't right. want a teen wolf. Teen wolf is fine. Yeah. Wolf man is bad. Right. Wolf woman would be different. Yeah. Because we don't have a lot of those. You are correct. There we go. I bet you like Twilight, don't you? I have never seen yeah. Twilight. What about an altered beast, the movie? Ooh, arise from your grave. Yeah. yeah, they need to put me on their marketing. Team. So when they turn him into a wolf, then you get, this is the part of the movie where you tune out. When he turns back into a dragon, you're like, yes, I'm paying attention again. Altered <laughs> beast, you son of a gun, mm. dropping that on. <laughs> Look at that. You know, he's like, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm gonna All make right. that movie myself. I would, I would see that. I'd see All that right. before All Wolf Man. Stop motion Vine movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll see that. Yeah, yeah. Some scenes will be on Ocho. Some will be on Instagram. Nice. Some on Vine. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta that, follow. Now that is social. That's a good That's way to get brilliant. everyone yeah, yeah. to follow you. It's like part two is connected. On Vine. Yeah, exactly. Part genius. Three. We got a genius on our hands. <laughs> no one else steal that idea. Yeah. Oh please. man. All right. Um, we got to finish things up. If uh, you got an email, 
think you know the deal. I think we heard back from everyone, right? About what? About the Back to the Future. Uh, oh, that the winners were picked. They the don't winner, know that. No, they. Oh, yeah, the winners were picked, and I believe we did hear back from all four of them. I think so. Uh, so, congrats to those four fine people. Thanks so much for uh, being a part of that. Uh, like I said, we'll get going with Call of Duty next week. And, uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure doing all these contests. Thanks so much for participating. Um, and I think that's how we're going to end it today, on a positive note, a positive note of winning. Of winning, yes. They all, you guys are all winners. But four of you in particular are really winners. <laughs> they are, literally. Uh, 866-404-CNET. Give us a call. Shoot us an email, the 404 at cnet.com. Uh, I believe we'll be back here tomorrow, so that's very nice. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, Twitter, and all that junk. Until tomorrow, we'll finish up the week. I'm Jeff Bacalor. I'm Maya's actor. I'm Ariel Nunez. This has been the 404 High Tech Lowbrow. We'll see you guys tomorrow.